My two best Mac Attack videos to date are the first one and I believe the second one. The first one because we have destroyed a space pan and the second one because we destroyed a second space pan. Now this Mac Attack video, uh, I think it's part 13 already, will probably be the third best or the second best, depends from uh, depends from the angle I guess, but today you will see a lot of very nice ships uh, explode, so uh, I'm very excited for that part. Now, this Macarial is still the good old Macarial that I got from one of my first corporations three years at this moment. That was actually three years ago now. And this Macarial was a PvE boat, but now it's used for PvP and so far it's been doing a very nice work. I still have the expensive faction drones, I always forget to remove them, but let them be in the in the drone slots, because why not? It looks nice and it adds a little bit more DPS. Now the rigs are still the same, I didn't go and I didn't put back the tier 4 rigs, I actually... Uh, I did take the tier 4 rigs and I have transported them back to Yita where they are waiting to be sold because I don't think that it's time for me to uh, go with the tier 4 rigs on the Macarial because last time they basically vanished from my ship because of a bug so in order to you know prevent something something funny like that from happening uh, I'll be using the tier 3 rigs for now until the price of the tier 4 rigs goes down. No, perhaps I will go and uh, get myself a clear sky Macario and a Koro just to change the look of the ship. However, I really like the dark Halo Nano Core, how it looks. It does look very attractive, it looks very nice. And there's a chance that I will go uh, and get a Deathwish Macario Nano Core to get extra points. So I have a couple plans uh, for this ship, but still haven't really decided on which one to to take. So we will see. But I really like the old school Dark Hell Nanocore. It's the first Nanocore that I ever bought, and uh, that's why I would like to keep it. Perhaps I will upgrade it, but I'm not really sure. I don't really like to upgrade Nanocores. I usually keep the default stat because that's basically all that I need for this little boat. The rest of the stats of the Macarial uh, are about the same. The ship stats, the ship state description has not been changed. But let me just double check that. Yeah, it's still the same. The DPS is the same. The module health is also the same. The Macarial is one of the highest DPS faction battleships. It's also one of the fastest so this ship has a very nice purpose and in my case a very specific purpose uh, with a clocking device which still is very hilarious and it does work very well Warp drive so uh, well you had a glimpse of our first target today we have a Nestor now here we kind of did fail to uh, to tackle the ship they somehow warped out without uh, being tackled so we will go and uh, do some of our tricks that we use when when a expensive ship like that warps out now they will be back I have a very good sixth sense feeling that uh, sixth sense feeling that they will come back and we have two Macarials, one Abaddon, and we have one Vindicator. And of course we have one Tackle Stratius. After waiting for a minute or two, the Nestor returned. Now they did not warp at 100, they actually warped at 70. And now I will approach. And this is where the, the game begins. Nestor has been engaged, barrage implant is disabled because uh, the Nestor is a little bit far away. 
but the barrage will be re-engaged once I am within range. The Nestor has excellent armor resistances and the Nestor seems to be fast so that's definitely no afterburner on this Nestor that's 100% a micro warp drive. They have the criminal timer because they did aggro our Stratius and by the looks of the effects coming from the Nestor they are using large rifled railguns which in reality is not really a optimal weapon for uh, for a Nestor for these ships the most optimal weapon would be uh, a weapon that doesn't use capacitor after all you need capacitor for armor repairs for the micro drive and for modules like that the Nestor now at 57 58 kilometers they are moving at about I would say 2.6 kilometers per second which you know is a pretty decent speed for for an Astro they can be uh, a lot faster you know they're not warping away and even if they try to warp away uh, if they land at a gate or if they land at the station at the moment they have the criminal timer they have the weapon timer so they can't dock and the gate guns would kill them so the Nestor is in a very tricky situation here now one of my uh, drones is still fighting with the Nestor I will pull them back because the Nestor seems to be shooting at my own drone and the Nestor is actually shooting with the uh, railguns at my drone so okay with the large rifled railguns you are definitely not going to hit a Imperial Navy medium drone they're now at 84 kilometers and they are still burning away I did move slide to the side not to be in the way of my friend because I think his material is actually a little faster but it, it does seem like we're moving at the same speed okay the Nestor is still burning away we're under attack. and well of course the Nestor makes me the primary target the usual Although I'm not the closest one, or actually I think I am the closest one. Okay, that's interesting. Now here I will try to uh, even to move to the side even more because perhaps the Nestor makes a mistake and uh, tries to. Oh, okay. We are under it worked. Attack. I guess they did turn around. No, I'm just checking out my surroundings, just in case if... Okay, if this Nestor is a bait. Now, they did repair the armor. We have a tackle interceptor on grid. Now, here, uh, because we have an interceptor and because these are medium drones and they're quite dangerous for a small ship, I will go and move around I will try to drag the drones with me so that the interceptor can approach now I had a different idea here uh, I thought to go and get a better warping but I will quickly cancel the warp here because the interceptor has to approach the Nestor in order to apply webs and scrambles so that we can approach that ship and well it looks like my idea worked the Nestor has been scrambled and the Nestor did launch the medium drones at the interceptor I think I bought enough time for for the interceptor to approach and hold the target long enough for our main ships to land on the Nestor now since I am not in the optimal position for warping, not attack. 150 kilometers away from uh, from the closest ship to the Nestor. I will have to approach the old school way, which means approach with the Mike warp drive. It should not take too much, after all this is a Macarial and they are known for their speed, so I will get in the optimal weapon range. On this Nestor, very quickly, the Nestor is scrambled, our hero tackle interceptor has been destroyed, but 
the interceptor fulfilled its purpose, the master is no longer using the micro warp drive, which means that they lost 90% of their speed and now our slower battleships will approach and probably finish off this this Sister of Eve battleship. The Nestor has some pretty good armor tank, I have to say. They definitely have a pretty good armor tank. I'm very inter interested to see the build of this ship. Nestor into low armor. We are under attack. Gyrostabilis are on. The barrage implant will also be turned on any moment. And the Nestor has been destroyed. Well, that was a very nice chase. Honestly, uh, most fun I've had in a very long time. That was an amazing kill. Excellent teamwork. Or should I say this was amazing teamwork actually. Everyone had to uh, had to work synchronized in order to to delete this 20 billion battleship. Now, on first glance, the build looks good. I will have to go and take a closer look. I'm just curious to see uh, all all the details of this ship because I'm fairly sure that that build could have been a little bit better. Uh, there were some uh, rigs that I believe were unnecessary, but. Overall, I think that was a pretty good chase and one of the better kills in a in a long time. Okay, since I have no longer the weapon timer and the criminal timer, let's go back to the gate. Excellent work, amazing job to the whole team. All of, all of you guys did an amazing job here Warp drive active. and it's always fun to fly with you. We lost the interceptor, but let's... Let's just say we are heavily ESC positive on, on this one. So, let's take a closer look at this Nestor. So, they used the large rifled railguns. Now, I personally would not use them. I would prefer missiles because they don't use any capacitor and they have overall... Uh, let's say they hit targets much more often than rifled uh, railguns. Now, the low slots are, are okay. Uh, this is a build very similar to the build that I used on the Nestor that I used for uh, for missions. Uh, I would definitely, for low sec, use dual armor repairs. The medium slots have this large armor link that does increase resistance by 9.09%, so I guess using this module uh, is actually not a bad idea since it does give you, it does give your own ship extra tank. Now they died with the small drones, they definitely had medium drones as well as large drones but they launched the small drones for for the interceptor and they had a lot of integration rigs over here now by the looks of it uh, they had let's take a look at the module list because I believe it's more accurate so 3P combat integration modules for the combat rigs I think these are the 70% ones which are a little bit more expensive, yeah, almost 1 billion ISK per rig, they give 70%. Medium slots, that one Mark 9 web is kind of pointing my eyes, because uh, why did you, why would you use a Mark 9 web instead of a better one on a 20 billion ISK ship? Now, one 3P engineering rig and one capa and two capacitor control circuits. Now, I don't see the contents of the, of the engineering rigs, which is a little bit weird, so... I guess I'll just have to go uh, and look at the uh, at the kill and scroll down to see what type of integrations they had. Let's quickly do just that. Nestor search. Click on the Nestor and let's go here. So, as for the engineering rigs, dynamic fuel valve. Okay, that's actually a smart idea. It does reduce the mic warp drive capacitor use. Polycarbon energy housing, inertia modifier minus 20%, also not a bad idea. And auxiliary thrusters, 20% extra speed. So overall, no complaints about this. Uh, it, very interesting combination, I'll say that. A very interesting combination on, on the on that. Anti-kinetic pump, it's okay. Anti-EM, now this is... Uh, I would replace the EM pump into a explosive pump because the ship has a explosive hole, I believe, so that I would using that rig the armor already has pretty good default em resistance 
Trimark armor pump, I would replace that with extra armor repair. The thermal pump is okay. And well, I think, yeah, that those were the, that was the build of the Nestor. Overall, two rigs that I would change. And uh, the ship would definitely be much more tankier. And this is our third Nestor. We already destroyed two of them in the past. Well, this is a third one. Overall, a uh, very, very interesting. Uh, hopefully there will be more. Now let's go to the Warp next target. Active. We have one Raven tackled. Okay, there is the Raven. Let's quickly lock on. Should be at the edge of my barrage implant. Actually, no, it's 25 kilometers. I need to approach a little bit before I can use the barrage implant. And this Raven looks like it's tanky. Okay, that's some solid shield resistance out of the Raven. Barrage implant engaged. And. The Jaros Tebaros are now on cooldown, the Raven at 50% shield. By the looks of it, the Raven is using dual large boosters, perhaps even integrated, because that's some really good resistance out of this battleship. The shield of the Raven is slowly going down, about to be in armor. Under attack. The Raven is now into armor, into hull. Once the shield on that battleship goes down, the hull, the armor hull actually are not a big problem. And the Raven has been destroyed. Nice. Okay, let's take a look at the wreck. And then let's warp out and wait out the criminal timer. That Raven was one of the well, on the tanky side, I would say. Definitely a tank build, but we will find out. And a lot of different modules inside of of the wreck. Warping to the asteroid belt. We are under attack. Warp drive active. Which is very close to the mission location. Okay, let me align somewhere, my core drive on, uh, and cloak <laughs> engaged. And now the Macariel is invisible. 2.6 billion Raven. Well, pretty solid kill for a Raven. And the loot fairy was not really nice to me today. Yeah, this could have been a pretty good, uh, pretty good isk value out of this ship, but no, not today. I guess the loot fairy did not like us blowing up that Nestor earlier, so... So, no good loot for me today. Warp drive active. Okay, let's prepare to go to the next target. Meanwhile, I'm Warp drive uh, active. I'm scanning something in the background. So my apologies if I sound a little bit distracted because I I'm a little bit distracted trying to scan someone. And well, probably yeah, they warped out. Wh whatever ship this is, they probably warped out. But I'll try to scan another time. And it's a small ship. Probably will be in the, in the next video, who knows. Well, it's something active. that's warping around. And let's just return to the Macario. So, we have two battle cruisers. 
uh, they were at 100. Now I usually drop a cruiser on Dalla cruisers, but uh, I thought that I might not have enough time to catch both of them, so I decided to whip out the the good old Macario and I land it just at the edge of the scrambler range. Basically, I need to blow them up before they decide to warp out, and I think this jo this ship is uh, going to work for that job really well. First battle cruiser and second battle cruiser have been destroyed in quick succession. Now let's loot the wrecks. We're I thought you know to take a cinnamon uh, or or Mahler or or the, the thorax, but. I had a feeling that I might not be able to blow them up before they warp, so I think it was the safer option to go with the Macario. They were not aligned, and I have removed the cloak so uh, that I can lock them on on warp time, and active. I think that was a good decision. Because, as you could see, it did lock them on fairly quick for a big, big battleship. I think with triple targeting rigs this thing does lock on as quick as a cruiser so uh, one more thing one more reason why the Macario can be considered a oversized cruiser it can lock like one so that's that's one fun thing about this ship one more fun fun thing about the Macario okay let's quickly take a look at the kills 386 million not bad and second one 132 million, also not bad. You know me, I don't complain. Any kill is a good kill. Especially nowadays when everything is stabbed. I guess one way how to counter stabs is uh, is use a lot of DPS and just blow them up before they can align and warp. And the Macario is surprisingly a good ship for that job, so as you could see it does work. Now the next target is a Vinicator and this Vinicator logged at the gate so we are about to go and uh, warp. We are waiting for the for the Vinicator to be tackled. Let's warp to zero. The Vinicator has been tackled by a Aster. There is always the chance that the Vinicator wakes up. Uh, usually, usually when they log out at the gate, they don't log in for a couple hours, but there is always the chance that they decide to check what happened with their ship after setting the autopilot, so we have to be fast in order not to risk the Aster. There is the Vinicator, already tackled, already into armor. My friends, Macariel is one of the fastest battleships in the game right now. Usually by the time I land, my friend already did like 50,000 damage to the target. And well, the Vinicator did log back in, but it was a little bit too late. The Vinicator got destroyed. That was a good catch. Always nice to catch a Vinicator. 4.3 billion, this was a sniper Vinicator. I would definitely not be rolling a ship like that into low sec. Because there is absolutely no defense against pirates. And as you can see, well... That was pretty quick. Uh, we destroyed that battleship fairly, fairly fast. Okay, let me align myself towards the station. I tell you, one day I'll just click warp by accident and I'll just laugh watching my ship go warp into gate guns. Hopefully that doesn't happen, but you know, always a chance that it does happen. So I'm just saying it right now. Okay. We have one Dominix. Now this Dominix is aligned, so I will try my luck, and uh, I count on the on the Macario's speed. 
basically if I can land and lock on the Dominix before it clicks warp I should be able to blow it up but we're about to find out what will happen always a chance that I mess up always a chance that the Dominix is expecting active. someone to warp in so we have to be I have to be careful However, I'm fairly sure that I can destroy the Dominics before they decide to leave the leave the missions. There is Dominics. They're using heavy drones, large drones. They seem to have stopped moving, which might be a big mistake because now they have to accelerate back to full speed in order to warp, or 75% of full speed in order to warp. Scrambled, triple webbed, and Dominics now into into armor, into hole. We're under attack. And the Dominix has been destroyed. Let's loot the wreck and let's warp out. Wait a second. Was that a cloaking device inside of the cargo hold? Was this a warp Black Ops added. Dominix? Well, we're about to find out once I finish warping. I think I picked a long warp. It will take about 10 seconds to land over there. Was this Dominic's... A Black Ops Dominic's. Just like this Macarial is a Black Ops Macarial. I know that I did create a trend where players started to fit clocking devices on their battleships. And I, I said, don't do that because it's not a good idea in most cases. It works in my case because this is a very specialized ship for a very specific purpose. And yes, it had a clocking device, a Black Ops Dominix. Well, the first one that I've ever seen. And triple webs. Overall, overall, don't fit clocking devices on your battleships because uh, it's usually not a good idea. It works in my case because this Macarial has a very specific purpose and a very specific job and of course it does work but it's still uh, not something that I recommend players to do. So yeah, don't fit, I mean please don't fit clocking devices on your battleships. Uh, it's, you know, wait for Black Ops, wait for actual Black Ops active. battleships to be released and then fit a clocking device on that thing. Although. I, I can lie, uh, the clocking device on this thing works really well, so uh, there is that. Somehow it does work really well, but I don't recommend, I don't recommend it. Okay, we have one sneaky apocalypse striker. And the Apocalypse Striker has aligned in this very moment, so we have to go and try a different warp in. Perhaps we try to. Well, looks like there is no time for it. Uh, my friend will have to go and scare the Apocalypse. Warp drive active. Meanwhile, I will warp to the Planet Five, where I will wait for the. for the warping command. Sometimes we do miss a target, but it happens very rarely. Usually it happens about the time when we wake up early in the morning, <laughs> when we are still sleepy. It happens. It happens quite often, but you know, it's not a big problem. It happens quite often when we are sleepy. That's that's what I mean. Okay, well, let's warp or... Warp drive active. Okay, well, uh... The wrong warp in, I guess, my bad. So, that means back to the planet. Now, this apocalypse striker seems to know us, and they seem to be avoiding us. Now, we have different options when we have to engage a target that seems to know us. We can log out and wait active. for uh, wait for other 
friends to, to basic attack and then we warp in or we can leave the system we have a lot of options but this apocalypse striker did not come back they uh, they did not come back so warping to the Warp drive active. next target we have a Dominix now with this Dominix the current uh, the current target that I'm warping to also knew us and well they were quite salty in the chat so uh, I had to leave system because they would not go back to the mission as long as I'm in local and well that means I probably yeah I missed the target but it's okay my friends got the kill and that's that's all it matters the target has been destroyed okay well we have one raven aligning myself to the raven's mission location now I could technically make the ship warp faster with this nano core uh, with the second level up, so I think I might drive go and do that just to get this boat warp a little bit faster, just so that I can at least uh, be close to, to my friend's warp speed so that we can uh, warp at the same time. But I, I think in most cases the current combination that we have is uh, the better idea because my friend has a lot more points to hold the target. Well, I have to land close in order to apply my scramblers. The Raven has been engaged, the barrage engaged, driver stabilizers have been engaged. And this Raven is also quite tanky. I like that I'm seeing a lot more tanky ships nowadays. It makes the whole fight a lot more exciting and uh, the fight takes longer than 10 seconds. Of course, two barrage materials will blow up most ships, but this Raven did hold out really well. It was a tanky one. It was a tanky one, very similar in tank like the previous one. So we will find out what's the build on this Raven when I warp out. Warp drive active. I always double check right before I warp, just in case I don't click warp to a gate at 100. I would be very dead if I would do that, but thankfully I don't make such mistakes. At least I think I don't make such mistakes, but we will see. And 1.3 billion Raven, they used classic crude missiles, and yes, this was also a tanky one, a PvP Raven with with tank integration rigs. This explains why they were so tanky. Overall, a solid, solid target and a solid kill. Alright, well this was I would say one of the one of the better mark attack videos in a while. Definitely uh, we had some pretty good kills today and was really really fun. So I really hope that you guys enjoyed. I love you all, fly safe, stay safe, and as always, I'll see you next time.